today's problem from successive differentiation right and the problem is if y this is equal to cos hyperbolic sin inverse x prove that the problem has three part the first part is 1 minus x square into y2 minus x y1 minus y this is equal to 0 this is the first proof the second proof is 1 minus x square y n plus 2 minus 2n plus 1 into x y n plus 1 this is equal to n square plus 1 into y n and we have to find the value of y n at 0 ok this three part has to be proved here and here we use an important rule or important theorem which is known as Leibniz rule of repeated derivative and this gives u v n the suffix n means n times derivative which is given by n c 0 u n v plus n c 1 u n minus 1 v 1 and so on ok we use this important rule of successive derivative we first differentiate the given y with respect to x and getting the value of y1 this is equal to the derivative of cos hyperbolic is given by sin hyperbolic sin inverse x into the derivative of sin inverse x which is equal to 1 by root 1 minus x square ok this is the first derivative now we multiply this portion in the left side we get root 1 minus x square y1 this is sin hyperbolic sin inverse x again we differentiate with respect to x both sides and getting the result as root 1 minus x square into y2 minus the derivative of root 1 minus x square which is given by 2x by root 1 minus x square 2 into 1 root 1 minus x square and this is minus into y1 this is fixed and the right side is also cos hyperbolic sin inverse x into 1 by under root 1 minus x square ok and we get from here by multiplying root 1 minus x square in left side get the result 1 minus x square into y2 minus x into y1 this is cos hyperbolic sin inverse x and which is given by y so we put the value of y in right side and getting the first proof which is given by 1 minus x square into y2 minus x y1 minus y this is equal to 0 this is our first target we achieve our first target this is 1 ok this is root now here we use Leibniz rule of repeated derivative how to use Leibniz rule of repeated derivative we take derivative of any product on both sides and getting the result as dn by dxn 1 minus x square into y2 this is the first term minus dn by dxn x y1 this is the second term minus dn by dxn into y this is equal to 0 ok and here we choose this is this is second function and this is first function and using this result we get this is u and this is v ok this is first function and this is second function now using Leibniz rule we get y n plus 2 because the derivative of first function is n times this is u n and this is fixed 1 minus x square and this is n c 0 this means 1 ok plus the second term is nc1 and the derivative of first function is less than the first term this is n plus 1 and the derivative of 1 minus x square first time this is given by minus 2x right and the third term is nc2 
y n and the derivative of this is two times so this is minus two and we have no right to write the term after that because the derivative of minus two one more times is zero okay so there is no required to write the term after that now we differentiate this by using the same rule and this rule gives minus here we take this is the first function u and this is the second function p and this result gives y n plus 1 into x plus n c 1 the derivative of y 1 y n and the derivative of x is 1 and we have to no required to write the term after that because the derivative of 1 after this term is 0 so the total term is 0 okay and clearly the derivative of y n times is y n so we get this result using Leibniz rule of repeated derivative now simplifying we get 1 minus x square into y n plus 2 and this is minus 2 n x because n c 1 means n and here minus 2 x so this is n plus 1 plus n into n minus 1 by factorial 2 this means 2 and 2 to cancel out so we write this is minus this is y n okay and the next term is x into y n plus 1 and this is n y n and this is y n this is equal to 0 okay now if we get the next line 1 minus x square into y n plus 2 minus here we get two term y n plus 1 and y n plus 1 so adding two term by taking common x we get 2n plus 1 into x y n plus 1 and the next term is minus n square n square minus n minus sorry this is plus n and minus n cancel out so we get n square plus 1 from here into y n this is equal to 0 ok so we get the second result and we write the second result as we write here this is 1 minus x square into y n plus 2 the second term is minus 2n plus 1 into x y n plus 1 and the right side is n square plus 1 into y n. Okay. And we prove our second target. This is target number 2. We very easily proved the second result. Now we have to find out the value of y n at 0. This means value of y n at x equal to x equal to 0. Okay. So we put the value of x equal to 0 in our given relation, relation number 1. This is y 0. Here we write y at x equal to 0. This means y 0. This is given by cos hyperbolic, cos hyperbolic sin inverse 0. This means cos hyperbolic 0, this means 1. Okay. And we put x equal to 0 in the first derivative. So this is y1 at 0. This is given by clearly this is 0 and this is 1 by 1 minus 0. So this is 0. Because sin inverse 0 means 0 and sin hyperbolic 0 means also 0. Okay. Now we put x equal to 0 here we get the result as 1 minus 0 into y2 at sorry y2 at 0 and the right side is 0 minus 1 so this is 1 okay because y at 0 is 1 we already get here and we get the result from here this is 1 minus 1 minus 0 y n plus 2 at 0 minus this is 0 this is given by n square plus 1 y n at 0. Okay. So we get another result 
this is y n plus 2 at 0 this is given by n square plus 1 into y n at 0 ok so we use this 3 result this 3 result to find out the value of y n at 0 ok now how the procedure to find y n at x equal to 0 from this recurring relation if we put put n equal to 1 then we get y3 at 0 because 1 plus 2 this is 3 at 0 this is given by 1 square plus 1 into y1 at 0 ok and y1 at 0 we already get from here this is 0 so we put here 0 so y3 at 0 this is 0 again if we put a equal to 3 in this relation we get y5 at 0 this is given by 3 square plus 1 into y3 at 0 and we already get y3 at 0 this is 0 so the right side is also 0 ok and so on if we put y5 we similarly get y7 at 0 this is 0 so we can write the general result as y2n plus 1 at 0 this is equal to 0 hence we say that all order derivative of y at x equal to 0 is 0 for this given function ok now we try to find for the even order derivative ok so for the even order derivative we first put here here we put a equal to 2 ok then a equal to 2 by putting here we get the value this is y4 at 0 y4 at 0 this is given by 2 square plus 1 into y2 at 0 and we already get the value of y2 from here this is y2 at 0 this is 1 we already get from this relation by putting y2 this is equal to 1 get this is 2 square plus 1 into 1 ok now put a equal to 4 and from here we get this is y6 at 0 this is given by 4 square plus 1 into y4 at 0 now y4 at 0 this gives the result 4 square plus 1 into 2 square plus 1 into 1 right and a equal to 6 this gives this is y8 at 0 this is given by this is given by 6 square plus 1 into 4 square plus 1 into 2 square plus 1 into 1 we directly write the result of y6 at 0 ok and getting the value of y8 at 0 so we write the result in general form as here we write the result in general form as this is y2 n at 0 this is given by this is given by 2n minus 2 whole square plus 1 this is the first term the second term is 2n minus 4 whole square plus 1 and so on 4 square plus 1 into 2 square plus 1 into 1 ok and this is the general result to find y n at 0 so in terms of n in terms of n if we write this result then getting the value y n at 0 minus 2 whole square plus 1 this is the first term and the second term is n minus 4 whole square plus 1 and so on this is 4 square plus 1 this is 2 square plus 1 into 1 if here we write n is even ok and this is equal to 0 if n is odd ok and this is the final result of y n at 0
okay and this is the third result or third target of our talk right very very important and interesting problem of successive differentiation thank you thank you for watching